Hey there, need anything? Sure, here's what I got. Hey there, need anything?
Hey there. Hey there. What can I do for you? Yeah, and I need sterile medical supplies. But let's see what I have with me. Another satisfied customer. Who sent you? I ain't talking. They tried to get me to talk before, but I didn't say nothing. And I don't aim to now, by gum. Confound it, Nobark, you've done it again. You let on that you know things. Now they'll never let you be. All right, stranger, you got me. What do you want to know? Because they know I ain't just barking here. What I say is God by it, because it's the truth. Them quack doctors can say what they want about all the rad scorpion stings that done pierced my skull. I know what I seen. There's been things of a disturbing nature going on at the McBride Corral. Seems every night one of their herd meets a most unnatural death. And always there's holes all over the body. Work of the chupacabra, the livestock vampire, says Nobark. But they don't pay no mind. Too many holes, they say, and there's bullets in them. Well, says Nobark, we got a chupacabra with an automatic weapon. And that's when they get real quiet, because now they see the predicament we're in. I come face to face with the Chupacabra himself one night, whilst I was investigating whether this gecko was hiding his treasure from me. He was the meanest, ugliest Chupacabra you could imagine. Had two heads and fangs down to the ground. Best I could tell anyways, since when he come up to me he was invisible. Had himself a blunderbuss, what would rotate and shoot bullets real fast out of a backpack. Never seen nothing like it. Walked right past me having an argument with somebody. But I only saw one chupacabra, so I guess the other fella had to be invisible too. Only more invisible than the other one. Folks will tell you that they seen ghouls up near the rocket factory. Sensationalist hooey, cooked up by superstitious yokels, seeing phantoms of their own imagining. Ghosts. Kami ghosts, but don't know they're dead. Hoping to steal our rockets, so they can fly up and paint the moon pink and draw a Lenin face on it. I seen one of them disappear and reappear before my very eyes. Although, being a scientist, I have to admit, I might have just blinked for longer than usual, what with the shock of seeing a Kami ghost and so forth. Sure have. Camouflage, that coat was, trying to hide from extraterrestrials what can only see in black and white checkers. <laughs> but they're not fooled, because he forgot to put checkers on his face. I told him so, and he seemed to take it to heart. They stayed here a night, and was up by the dinosaur, talking to the sniper fellow with the mustache a couple of times. 
If anyone asks, we never spoke. Hey there. Hey there. Well, welcome to you. You look tired from the road. Why don't you relax a spell? Let this fine town take care of you. Oh, what am I doing? I got to thinking about making a good impression and plain forgot to tell you my name. I'm Jeannie May. I take care of folks here at the motel, long as they aren't troublemakers. We're in a little desert oasis, name of Novak. This is the Dino Delight Motel, and it's mine. Well, there's Dinky, the town mascot. He's a sight. You probably already saw him when you came in, but you can go up inside, too. Up the roadways to the west, there's Repcon. That's the old rocket factory. There's been some sinister characters out there lately, so you may want to stay clear. Other than that, nothing to do but take it easy and enjoy good company. Well, up north a ways, you'll see a big tower. That's Helios 1. Used to be a power plant in its day. And there's a town just east of here called Nelson. Used to be such a quaint little place until those slavers took it over. But we got our wonderful snipers keeping an eye in that direction, and so far, the slavers have left us alone. I just know what I've heard. There's supposed to be some ghouls that went in a while back. Ever so often, there'll be a commotion from that direction. Explosions and such. Watch out for strangers! I hope you're finding everything to your liking. Well, I think that's a fine idea. I'll give you a good flat rate, and you can stay as long as you like. At least until the busy season comes. Sound good? I'm glad you can stay with us. Your room will be the one upstairs, closest to the lobby side. Here's your key. Let me know if there's anything I can do to make your stay better for you. Go see Cliff Briscoe at the Dino Bite gift shop. And tell him I sent you. I think he gets lonely standing around in that dino belly all day. He'll be glad for the company. Well, let's see. Dusty McBride's been losing some Brahmin, but that's probably the heat more than anything. Honestly, it's been real quiet. Ranger Andy's still hurt, but we got these two gentlemen snipers watching the road day and night, keeping the trash out of Novak. They've been a blessing. You can jump out the window for all I care, lady. You got no right to come in here and start criticizing our town. Folks work hard to keep it clean and safe. We do the best we can. But still, there's always some of you finicky types that there's just no pleasing. Watch out for strangers. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit if it ain't my old friend from Good Springs. Don't rightly know. I just got the notion to make my way to New Vegas. Reckon I'll find out when I get there. Novak? Nice enough place, I suppose. But between you and me, when I rolled into town, my skin started to itch. Watch yourself. 
Likewise, friend, likewise. Is there anything old Vic can do you for? Well, this ain't New Vegas, but I reckon you can find what you need here. Try the office out front. No, don't believe I did. But you might ask around. The Novak folk usually see anyone traveling this way. I'll let that slide, seeing as how you got a mind full of vengeance for that no good pole cat and all. Be seeing you. Welcome to the Dino Bite gift shop. My name's Cliff. If you're here for the T-Rex figurines, you're just in time. There's still a few left. Bless her. Seems like every traveler I get in here tells me the same thing. They see the sign and think, gift shop? That's just too good to be true. But Jeannie May always points them back in my direction. Well, a friend of Jeannie's is a friend of mine, and my friends get a discount at my store. Well, there's T-Rex figurines, of course. That's our bread and butter. We also have an assortment of the Repcon factory souvenirs, rockets, things of that nature. Guns? I, uh, well, yeah, I guess I might have a few. Darn it, no one ever buys the T-Rexes. They're scale replicas of the real thing. Very detailed. Got a liquid in them that makes them glow. From what I hear, Repcon used to give them out on tours of their HQ up in Henderson. But I guess they had to stop after the first few kids thought they were filled with Nuka-Cola and drank it down. The papers had a name for the condition and everything. They called it the Repcon Shakes. Those were bad times for Robco. 
Well, they unloaded what they had left on the dino bite as a tax write-off, but that was before my time. Plenty of demand for them, seeing as how they're one-of-a-kind collector's items, but I might still have some in back. Sure thing. Have a look. Come back soon now. What's going on, man? I'm Manny. I'm on security detail here. You see a rifle barrel sticking out of the dinosaur's mouth, you got a 50-50 shot at me. Otherwise, it's Boone. You name it. Anything that comes within a thousand yards that looks like trouble. Lately, we've been getting ghouls, coming from the road to Repcon out to the west. Quite a few last couple days. The big threat is the Legion coming from the east. If they decide to attack with a full force, they'll run us over. But so far, we've been lucky. Boone's a sniper, same as me. Used to spot for him when we were enlisted with the NCR. After we got out, I talked him into settling down here. So, here we are. I'd introduce you, but uh, we're not so friendly right now. Me and his wife, we didn't see eye to eye on some things. We had some pretty big arguments. One day, she turns up missing, and he hasn't said a word to me since. Man, you name it. See, I grew up in North Vegas, me and my cousins. We were some bad seeds. Got in with a gang, I loved it. Then something happened, and I couldn't handle it anymore. So, I enlisted, earned my future, brought down my best friend to share that future with me. And here was this woman, who was too good for it, trying to take him away. So yeah, I didn't see eye to eye with the bitch. Were they tough? I was in the cons, man. It doesn't get any badder. Oh, it was great. I wouldn't trade it. Something about that lifestyle, the discipline, seeing new places, making people safe. What's not to like? Uh, well, I just felt like it was time, you know? Wanted to have a home. Plus, I was up at Camp Golf when Bitter Springs went down. I faked like I was sick to get out of going because I knew some of the people there. But when everybody came back, nobody would tell me what happened, and people would call us murderers sometimes when we showed up to secure towns. I still don't know exactly. Just that a lot of people died who didn't want to be a part of the fighting at all. I don't blame anybody for it. There's so much chaos when you're fighting. You're lucky not to shoot your own guys. But it did take something out of it for me. This wasn't the same. So when it came time to re-enlist, I just took my papers and walked. Sure I know him. What do you want with him? You talking about that chip? Man, I don't think he's giving it up. Well, listen, I can definitely help you find him, but I've got problems of my own. Maybe we can do a trade. You need my help. There's something I need, too. Novak, it's home for me now. I want that to be for good. I like it here, and I've left too many homes behind. But the only resource we got here is junk. Without that, people wouldn't have anything to trade. They'd all have to leave. We get most of it up the road from the old rocket test site, but a bunch of ghouls showed up one day and took it over. We can't get in there now. I would, but I've got to watch the road. Caesar's Legion has been taking territory just east of here. They took Nelson. If we let our guard down, they might attack. All it takes for the Legion is for them to sense weakness. Well, they gotta go, or this will be a ghost town before long. Doesn't matter to me what you do. As long as the ghouls are out of there, that's good enough for me. It'd mean a lot to me. Just head over to the Repcon test site west of here. See if you can get the ghouls out of there. 
Yeah, see ya. We haven't met yet. You must be new in town. I'm Andy. Right now, a whole lot of sitting on my keister and counting cracks in the ceiling. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. On better days, I help keep the peace. Boone and Vargas watch the road. I watch the town. Tell myself I'm doing some good. Was. Was with them. That was back when my arm and leg used to work better. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger, though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. They haven't been responding to me last couple days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. Hell, listen to me talk, like some damn mother hen. Uh, no, no, they're gonna think I'm having trouble letting go. They're good soldiers. I don't give them enough credit. They're the NCR's finest. A one-man platoon, each of them. You got a job where even thinking about it would scare a man senseless? That's when you bring in the Rangers. And if you see a squad of veterans, guys who are in their black armor, well, you won't find a more beautiful sight. Yeah, twice. Actually, the first time, it was more like half my body. Knocked me out of the Rangers. This time, it's mostly just reminded me how useless I've gotten. A few years back, we get a tip that some Legion slavers were holed up in this burnout house a few clicks from where we were stationed. We get there and it's deserted. No sign anyone's been there. I mean, nothing. As we're leaving, I hear something behind me. I turn around and there's this kid, just skin and bone, and he's looking up at us and he's scared half to death. Been hiding in a closet. I go to grab him out of there and I notice he's holding something in his hand. Something metal. He shuts himself back in the closet, and that's when I see the grenade he's left by my feet. They do it a lot, the Legion, using kids. They know we'll hesitate. Anyway, that was the first time. Second time, I fell down those stairs in front of the motel, just in case I got to thinking I'd put it all behind me. Huh. <laughs> People don't exactly line up to find out what's in my head. Can't remember the last time someone suggested I knew something worth knowing. You know? Maybe there's something I can do for you. Since you've gone to all the trouble of flattering a crippled old soldier, there's a move we have in the Rangers for knocking an opponent off his feet. Save my butt a bunch of times, maybe it will for you too. Let me show you how it's done. You'll get the hang of that takedown. I had trouble learning it at first too.
Any word on Station Charlie? What? What happened? Those were good men at that station. Good men. This whole town was sleeping a lot easier because of them. Now, who knows what we're in for. The Legion? Christ. We'd be better off with raiders. Well, thanks for telling me. I know that knowledge didn't come without risk. Here, take this. Courtesy of the Ranger Veterans Fund. Look out for yourself. Howdy. No offense, but I need to focus on getting more rest when I'm off duty. I'm not sleeping so good. So now's not a good time. If you want to talk, catch me when I'm on duty. I'm up at the dinosaur after 9 p.m. Yeah. weather for flying. It's times like these that make me miss it all. Vertibird pilot. 71 missions and only lost one chopper. Rotor malfunction over Klamath. Hard landing, but I walked away. I help folks strip down the more complicated bits of salvage they bring in. Engines, mostly. The bits and pieces we take out are usually worth more than the whole thing put together. Four? No, not exactly. It was a long time ago. Things are a lot different these days, and those days are way behind me. Watch your six out there. Please don't kill me. I swear I'll have... Wait, you... You don't work for Mr. Bishop, do you? Sorry, it's just... You look like his type, you know? You got that hard-ass wasteland explorer thing going on. Oh, so you have heard of me. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I was the big draw at the Shark Club. People used to pay hundreds of caps to see me. You don't know Mr. Bishop. He's not like other bosses up there. He knows the wasteland like the back of his hand, and he likes to wander it. I knew if I didn't get way the hell away from New Reno, he'd run me down like a dog. Oh, well, that's all just a big misunderstanding, see? Mr. Bishop, well, he owed me a lot of money, and, uh, you know, he's a busy guy, so I sort of figured I'd just take it off his hands. Robbed is such an ugly word. It's more like I took care of a payroll problem for him. Also, I might have... Uh, sort of plowed his daughter. A little. Thanks. But if Bishop finds me and I don't have his money, my balls are going to be on his trophy wall. You do that? Great. I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. See you later.
What brings you here? I'm not sure who started it. It wasn't a very nice name, but he took to calling himself by it, so we all had to. I don't even remember what his real name is. Anyway, I think it comes from that expression that people say when you're crazy, that not all of your dogs are barking. Poor no bark. Oh, we keep to ourselves for the most part. Try not to pry. I think Jeannie Mae gets bothered that we aren't more sociable. But it's just our way. Ain't that we don't appreciate what she's done, managing this town like she has. But I worry she feels that way anyhow. Not that there ain't others who pry around here. That no bark was skulking around our yard last week. <laughs> I thought he was our cow killer. Was about to lash him with our bull whip till I saw who it was. He's harmless, though. Part of me wishes I could see things like he sees them. All full of mystery. Oh, well, I'm Alice. And that handsome stranger yonder is my husband, Dusty. Going on 50 years now. I keep waiting for him to leave me for some young thing with platinum blonde hair and hoop earrings. But he still sticks around. Says it's my cooking. I think it's because I know which Brahmin utter you can milk without getting kicked in the noggin. We set up this ranch years back when Novak was just getting settled. But now, with all the danger on I-15, folks are starting to come through here from all over. Novak might just be the next Nevada boomtown. Nice of you to visit. Things treating you all right? Oh, I tend to my ranch. That's about it. Alice will tell you, I don't get out a whole lot. Losing don't describe it. It's a massacre. A few more days and there won't be nothing left to lose. Every night around midnight, Alice and I wake up to some crazy hollering and gunshots. You'd think the world was ending all over again. But it's just one animal each night. They don't take it or carve it up or nothing. Just leave it there, all full of holes. We'd be grateful, especially if you find them before they get in my whole stock. But don't go getting yourself killed over it. Alice and I'll find a way to make do, always have. Beg your pardon, ma'am, but them two-headed bees ain't worth getting shot over. Not to mention what would happen if half of what Nobark says is true. Best we can hope is that whoever's doing this will move on or get tired of it. I just hope it happens while we still got animals left. Whoever it is, I don't think they're from around town. Seems like they've taken to shooting from the west side. So long. Find anything? Well, I don't know how you've done it, but I do know how I can thank you. 
Please take this, compliments of Alice and myself. And help yourself to anything in that freezer over yonder. We got more steaks in there than we'd be able to eat in a year. So long. What brings you here? Hey there. You've done a good turn for the NCR, and now we'd like to do one for you. There's an NCR emergency two-way radio. You call, and we'll come running. You're not alone out here. The NCR has your back. Stay safe and good hunting. Old Lady Gibson, or so they tell me. I've got odds and ends for sale, and I'm pretty good at fixing things, too. You might have noticed the very large building just north of here. That's Helios 1. The NCR runs the place, so it's off limits to prospectors. Happy to do it. Sometimes it seems like I spent the better portion of my youth in that old wreck of a building. Me and my hubby, may the man rest in peace, used to scavenge there. <laughs> if it weren't bolted down, you can bet we took it and sold it. A lot of the scrap you see around here is from Repcon, even my favorite chair. The way I heard it, the Brotherhood of Steel ran the place before the NCR took it away from them. I'm not sure who started shooting first. But when it was over, the Brotherhood, with all their fancy armor and weapons, was on the run. Nobody's heard from them since. Well, I'll give you a hint. They used to just call me Gibson. 
I hope you can figure out the rest. I don't mind, to be honest. Living long is a real accomplishment these days. Remains to be seen if I end up dying peaceful in my bed. Take care now. Subject E, diagnosis complete. Begin recording. My name is Whitley. I'm a researcher at Adams Air Force Base. Until recently, I was in charge of the Duraframe Reinforcement Project for the combat model iBots. iBot Duraframe Subject E is both the prototype and the last functional model in this test group. I was prepared to make several significant upgrades to the machines. However, as the project was canceled and all Duraframe assets are being diverted to Hellfire Armor, I am sending this model to the Navarro Outpost. If you're listening to this log from one of our Enclave outposts in Chicago, give this unit whatever repairs it needs so it can continue to Navarro. The Kaisar has marked you for death, and the Legion obeys. Ready yourself for battle. You'll pay for that. You like that?
Howdy, little lady. My story's a long one, friend, and I can't say as it's all that interesting. Well, I was born in a little town out Montana way. Me and Ma didn't have much, ever since my pa up and left. That he did. Never did know why. Ma always said he was a real mysterious fella, even when he was with her. Like he was a stranger sometimes. Maybe. Maybe I just never felt like I belonged back home. It sure wasn't easy. Ma worked her fingers to the bone to make sure we had enough to survive. And I worked the coal mines from when I was 15. After Ma died, I guess I wanted to find my pa and get some answers from him. Been out here looking ever since, but he ain't an easy man to find. Can't say as I really know. Maybe I'll just ask him why. Maybe I'll punch him right in the mouth. Hell, the more I talk about it, the more the whole damn thing sounds like a dumb idea. Maybe I should. Don't suppose you know any place a fella with a guitar might find a job, huh? Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Oh, this old thing? Why, thanks, friend. This here guitar is just about the only thing my daddy left me. Just about my whole life, ever since my daddy left Ma and me and went off to roam the wastes. So long, friend. Welcome to the 188 Slop and Shop. How can I help you? Name's Michelle. My dad and me run this store. His name's Samuel. I take the day shift and he takes nights. We came here about a month ago when Prim went to hell on account of the prison break north of there. Found a bin to call home and set up shop. There's more to the 188 than meets the eye. Troops move back and forth on 93 all the time, and 95 is how NCR folks come and go from Vegas. No shortage of customers, so long as Legion raids south of here don't get worse anyways. You do know these old roads were numbered, right? We're standing where the 95 and 93 meet, and 95 plus 93 equals 188. Not much. I hear some folks got killed down by Nelson. Or was it Novak? I don't know. If they come up this way, me and Dad will go someplace else. Have a look. No offense, but you look like you've traveled a long way down some bad roads. Where'd you come from? Wow, you have come a long way then. I've never been there, but I've met some traders who passed that way. Well, welcome then. I'm Veronica. I live in a hole in the ground. Well, a bunker, if you want to get technical. I think it sounds more interesting my way. But I'm not there much anymore. I'm usually out here picking up food and supplies for my family, whatever they need. Yeah, I'm not worried. They can handle themselves. But somebody has to get the groceries, know what I mean? And actually these days, I think they'd rather have me out here anyway. But that's a whole other story. So listen, can I ask you something on the level? I 
had a run-in with this group calling themselves the Brotherhood of Steel. Pretty strange bunch. Do you know anything about them? Well, that shouldn't be a problem for me. I can't afford anything like that. Hey, so where are you headed anyway? Ooh, very exciting. Gonna strike it rich, huh? I'll be honest, you're the first person I've run across out here that looks like she can really handle herself. There are places I've never been to that'd be too dangerous for just me. What do you think? Maybe we could travel together, help each other out. Hmm. Good. That's the look I was going for. Trust me on this one, though. You'll be glad you brought me along. If I turn out to be a burden, we can part ways at any time. No hard feelings. Oh, nowhere in particular, really. Just hoping to see more of the world. Looking for a fresh perspective. I want to see how different groups have adapted to survive in the Mojave. See if there's something I can learn from. Like I said, they can handle themselves. And I'm not the only one getting supplies for them. It's a big family. Now you're talking. One thing you should know first, though. I ask you about the Brotherhood because I'm one of them. I know, I know, but I had to know how you react when I told you. We have made a lot of enemies. You still okay bringing me along? I'm great at punching people. I'm not gonna lie. It's a gift. Well, thanks for taking a chance on a naive young girl from California with stars in her eyes and a pneumatic gauntlet on her hand. Let's hit the road, huh? Does jumping at them with my fists count as ranged? You're making me carry the heavy stuff, aren't you? Got something good for me? Is it a dress? Ooh, got something good for me? Is it a dress? You a merc? Cause you don't look like a prospector. Hell yes, ma'am. Well, not officially. Not anymore. They mustered me out a year ago. Administrative discharge. Staff Sergeant, 3rd Platoon, Bravo Company. I was at the dam when the Legion hit us three years back. That was a shitstorm, and don't let anybody tell you different. The brass try to play it down, but most of them were back at McCarran. I didn't. My CO ordered me to flog a couple deserters, and I told him to eat shit. So they kicked me out for insubordination. Those kids didn't desert. They just got liquored up on the strip and missed roll call. I don't know what else the brass expects. Half these kids don't get more than two weeks of training before they ship them out here. Going home didn't feel right. Not with those savages camped on the other side of the river sharpening their knives. And I still get to see my old platoon when they pass through here. Make sure the new CEO is treating them right, and sneak them extra ammo. Anyway, I was always complaining about the standard issue gear. The new kids don't even get body armor, can you believe that? So I hooked up with a couple other vets, bribed a gunrunner. Now we're supplying grunts, mercs, and anybody else on our side. We don't make much, but at least we're saving lives. Vegas is bleeding us dry. We're tossing caps at a hundred different problems, while Caesar bides his time and lets us wear ourselves out. This war is gonna bankrupt the NCR, unless we finish off the Legion fast and dirty. 
We shouldn't be perched up at the dam. We ought to be crossing the Colorado and sticking a boot up Caesar's ass. Sure, no problem. Gotta piss someone off to pull guard duty out here. This job's boring enough without talking. Is there some reason I should be talking to you? <laughs> like you have a clue what that even means. The Gunrunners have been putting rapid-fire death-dealing in the hands of anyone who needed to defend himself for over a century. We're the NCR's number one supplier of weapons and ammunition. You might call us an unofficial branch of the army. I'm a salesman. I swing through McCarran and the dam once a week or so to take orders. But lately, I spend most of my time in this piss heap. Ever since the 15 shut down, all caravans come through here, right to me. I check the stock and direct deliveries onward to meet orders. Sure, it stinks to hang out here, but it won't be forever. Plus, I can afford a monthly bender on the strip and still build up my nest egg. Not much to tell. A Brahmin or two loaded up with weapons, and a whole mess of well-armed guards to make sure it ends up where it's supposed to. One nifty bit, though. The gun cases are rigged to explode, so trying to loot one of our caravans doesn't do much good. And that's how the NCR stays equipped. The only thing we don't bring in is energy weapons. We used to, but every caravan carrying them was getting ambushed and wiped out. By someone sophisticated enough to know which was which. We think it was the Brotherhood of Steel. Those crazies always go hard for energy weapons. But the NCR would rather pretend they killed all of them. You like it any better if I tell you to fuck off? You. Still making a nuisance of yourself? Am I selling? Yeah. Am I selling to you? No. Sorry to hurt your feelings, but you're small time. Move along. There's usually a gun merchant hanging around topside. I'm sure she'll take care of you. Bye. See Alexander. Man. Still making a nuisance of yourself? You might be onto something. I like to hang on to any weapons mods I run across. Take a look. Give me a shout if you need anything out. Bye. People usually aren't stupid enough to steal from the gun run.
Hello, ma'am. I hope you're doing fine today. I don't have a mama or papa anymore. I see them sometimes when I take off my medicine, but they can't stay. I'm pretty used to being on my own. Oh, I don't sell things, ma'am. I sell thoughts. I can take off my medicine and do some thinking. People say it's real interesting. I don't know, because I never hear it. Some people say that it's a gift. Other people say it's the kind of thinking anyone could do if they watched more than they talked. I don't know which is true. I see a lot. I think a lot. There's a lot to hear through the 188, too. That maybe accounts for the thinking. This thing on my head is headache medicine. It works real good, except I can't think when it's on. Really think, I mean. That's not junk. That's other people's thoughts. People had to think to make them, and the thoughts got stuck inside. I need other people's thoughts to fill my head when I'm not thinking myself. Otherwise, it's kind of empty. Great. What do you want me to think about? I can think about you, here, or everywhere. What do you want? Okay. Let me take off my medicine. Your face does the thinking. Two to the skull, yet one gets up. Odds are against you, but they're just numbers after the two to one. You're playing the hand you've been dealt, but you don't let it rest. You shuffle and stack, and a gamble. A gamble that may pay off, but how? Forecast, rapidly changing conditions. A lot of thinking, most of it in your face. It's almost shouting at me. Sorry if I said anything weird. Sure, I could do some more thinking. What should I do my thinking about this time? Let me take off my medicine. Bull and bear over the dam at each other's throats. But a light from Vegas? Ball spinning on the wheel. More than two at the table. Placing bets. All lose in different ways. A dam of corpses. Towns of corpses. Scattered across the sand. But whose? In what shares? Even the dealer doesn't know. Forecast, a rain of blood will flood the desert and not purify it. Blah. Thinking about everywhere always makes me feel a little sick. Sure, I could do some more thinking. What should I do my thinking about this time? I need to take off my medicine. Local, local. The here and now. Little of interest. Things to buy. False hopes and regrets watered down. Washed down in dirty glasses. With regret comes a girl. Smiling sad. Brown robe. Name Veronica. Half here. Wraps her and her heart up like a pack. In the pack. A key, some say. Forecast. Cloudy with a chance of friendship. Ouch. Thinking small only hurts a little. But it's a sharp pain. Sorry, ma'am. All that thinking has made my head hurt. I don't think I'll be doing any thinking for a long time. I thought I'd be seeing you again. Thinking hurts you too? Aw, I wish I could let you have the one on my head, but I can't. It hurts real bad when I don't wear it. Oh, I don't know anything, ma'am. I just think it, and then I don't. See you. What's up? He was dead when I got there. It pays like ass, but it's hard to get other work with my skill set. What do you want to know? <laughs> Good question. These days, it's hard to say. Once upon a time, it was about technology, controlling it so it couldn't destroy us again. Energy weapons and power armor are usually tops on our list, although I appreciate anything that's vintage. But that all seems so limited now. We haven't grown or adapted, and now we're stuck in a hole, not carrying out our mission. More sexual favors than I can even count. I am still tired from it. No, actually, you're born into it. My parents, their parents, so on. When you're young, you can choose to leave, but it's home, so most people don't. We don't take on new members, really. 
You can do the math on our long-term prospects based on that point. I keep hoping we'll change that. I'm a procurement specialist. Like I said, it's basically grocery shopping, except sometimes the groceries are scavenged parts and arcane technology. The elder who brought us to the Mojave, Father Elijah, usually had me looking for these old memory units, but he'd never tell me what they were for. Nowadays, I'm usually sent to do business with traders at places like the 188, but sometimes I think it's just to keep me out of everyone's hair. I know sometimes I sound like I don't, I know, but there's something that still rings true to me about our code. There's an honor to it. We're protecting people, even if it's from themselves. It's a good cause. We just lose sight of the big picture sometimes, treat all our practices with the same sacredness. Ah, the Codex. If it's in there, we have to abide it. If it's not, it's not important. It documents our history, too. Part of what scribes like me do is update it. Hmm, I wonder. Nah, they'd probably catch it if I rewrote the Founder's axioms. No, no. We only protect people from themselves, and only in the sense that we don't let them have the really good pre-war toys. And sometimes it's more like we protect ourselves from them and hope to outlive them and become humanity's sole heirs. We've had people go rogue, though, and start helping people. One chapter had a small civil war over it. We take our isolationism seriously. He was our elder when we came east. A wizard with technology, really. His mind just worked that way, naturally. I learned a lot from him. But he started having disagreements with the other elders. The Brotherhood's interest is in old technology. He wanted to explore developing new tech. And there were other ways he wanted to push, other weapons, ones with ethics questions attached. Rather than deal with him, they sent him east. Darn it! I had some spectacular answers coming too. This better not be about the meaning of life. Yep, it's your typical city layout. Rich people in a gated community surrounded by extreme poverty. House gave the area around the strip to the locals, but he has no interest in it, so he ignores it entirely. It just needs new management. I'd love to see the Brotherhood do it, but since the Codex doesn't say clean up Freeside, no one listens to me. Bunch of sticklers. Well, when two people really love each other, you really don't know this stuff yet? I'm worried they'll be the death of the Brotherhood. They take what they want. We defend our interests to the death. But there's a handful of us and tens or hundreds of thousands of them. So it's not going to end well. Last time we clashed, we lost a lot of people. Retreated to our bunker. Now we're afraid to even move around during the day. Ooh, do I get a prize if I answer right? Silliest dress band of raping, slaving marauders you'll see east of California. I'll say that. Where's that touch of old world class? Although, I hear the soldiers mount each other as much as they mount their women, so maybe they did keep a little something from the Empire. No such privilege for the women, though. Figures. So, to answer your question, they're a bunch of hypocritical jerkwats. It's a word. I was told we wouldn't be tested on this. Darn it! I had some spectacular answers coming, too. I like long walks in the desert and candlelit metal workshops. I like punching things, but sometimes shooting things just has to do. Yeah, I've been taking things apart and putting them back together since before I said my first word. You want to build something? Talk to me, and we can do it right there on the spot. Workbenches are from novices. Who knows? I might even be able to show you a Brotherhood trick or two. My favorite subject. I want a dress. Yeah, a good one. Something elegant and classy, you know? But still stylish. Something that's eye-catching and sexy, but also says, don't fuck with me. I keep hoping I'll come across some old world designer gown when I'm scavenging, but it never happens. Maybe I should move back to California. Hey, you try getting a date wearing scribe robes. Might as well be wearing sweatpants. I just like them, you know? They make you feel like a woman. Those ladies before the war, they knew what they were doing.
Can I make it up? I would say he was my tutor, but that doesn't cover it. After my parents passed, he looked after me. The whole brotherhood brought me up, really, but he made sure of it. I never had a grandfather, not that I knew, anyway. But Elijah was in some ways what I'd imagined a grandfather to be. It was by his request, actually. He cleared it with the other elders, somehow. They sent him to look into the dam. There was a time when I'd have begged to follow, watch him at work. He did. For years, he fought with the council, taught me to question our direction. Meanwhile, he'd become more out of touch than all of them. On our way east, he demanded we stop at Helios 1 to examine it. While we were there, we received word that the NCR had taken the dam. He was furious. Called it children playing with a bomb, but he was mad because we'd lost its power. What we'd use it for? He didn't even care. They're cautious. When they discover something, they respect it, learn its limits, consider how to preserve it. Used to drive Father Elijah crazy. He liked to learn limits too, but only so he could push them. That's not to excuse the other elders though. They all covet technology for its own sake. Some are just more fanatical than others. Yeah, I did. I couldn't help him. He just didn't listen. And the idea that people talk back to him. <sighs> if he could have made the Brotherhood act like machines, ordering them around with the push of a button, he would have. Elijah could look at an old device and immediately understand what made it work. And he could see its potential, where it fit with other technology. It's not something he could teach, but he tried with me. Some of it stuck. But that's what he taught me. You ask what I learned from him. I learned what I don't want to become. In the end, there was just him and his vision. Nothing and no one else. Yeah, I miss him. Like what? Just my parents, but they haven't been around for a long time. Dad was a paladin, Mom was a scribe. They died in the same battle, trying to hold off the NCR from... something. I don't remember what it was. Guess it seemed important at the time. Like what? Ever been nosy? I was, once. We were pretty young, but I like to think it was love. She left the Brotherhood, wanted to put some distance between herself and her parents. Since our membership isn't open to outsiders, some members think that obligates all of us to procreate. You can guess which camp her parents belong to. No, couldn't bring myself to leave everyone else behind. Couldn't convince her to stay either. I'd hoped love would be enough to influence her decision, but it wasn't. We were both too stubborn. I don't know where she is now, but I'm sure she's moved on. I still think about her though, once in a while. Ooh, got any juicy gossip? A lifetime supply of fancy lad snack cakes, revenge against my enemies, and world peace. In that order. Let's. <laughs>